appreciate taking time out of your schedule to join us today for this period of Bible study. Into this lesson, we want to spend a few moments looking at Psalm chapter 27. This was a psalm written by David. We're not sure when it was written, but almost certainly it was written when he was at a time of that was very low in his life. We know that he had many problems during his life. He know what he faced many times when he was certainly afraid. And this psalm gives some solutions to how we can overcome fear. And that becomes good for us because, you know, at times we are also afraid of various things. We face trials and tribulations. We grow afraid just like David did. Sometimes our opposition might come from our own family, just like David's opposition came from his family. And so this psalm helps us overcome the fear that naturally will assail us. So first of all, let's begin by looking at the first three verses of Psalm chapter 27. There David wrote, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came up against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Here we find that God transformed the fears of David, and he will transform our fears as well. Notice that David said that God was his light and his salvation. Notice God does not merely give light or give salvation, but that he is of those things. This pertains to the confidence of joyous victory, which God had promised to his people. He also said that God was his strength or his stronghold. God was his place of safety and refuge. And with such confidence in God, then he said, who shall I be afraid of? In other words, there's no reason for me to be afraid of anyone. This is the confidence of being dependent upon the power of the Almighty God. It's not the confidence of a boastful Goliath just before David killed him, but it's the confidence based on the strength of God. Paul said much the same thing in Romans 8 and verse 31 when he says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You see, David was confident of ultimate victory. But this confidence of ultimate victory is based on his dealing with God in the past. It's based on the fact that God has always kept his promises and took care of him. And then we come to verses 4 through 6. There David says, One thing I have desire of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices and of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing as yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Here we find the desire of David to have communion with God and the ultimate ex benefits he experienced by being in communion with God. You see, David desires one thing to dwell in the house of the Lord. He doesn't desire a large army or to be master of a large city, but he wants peace so he can live in God's house, the temple, and to serve God. Notice how earnestly he desires it. One thing I desire and seek. One thing he wanted, that is to dwell in the house of the Lord. You know, divided aims weaken and distract us. Paul said in Colossians 3 and verse 2, to set your minds on things above, not on things on the earth. We need to dwell in the house of the Lord, and that should be our desire. But not only would he 
be able to dwell in a temple and to worship God, but in the temple he would be able to learn the will of God. You know, when Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, Jesus said he, she chose the good part, the needful part. While her sister was busy preparing a good meal, she was sitting and learning from the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said, that's the good thing. Well, David said much the same thing. He wanted one thing, and that is to be in the temple of the Lord. There he could inquire of the Lord. And in the temple, he would also be able to offer sacrifices and sing praises to God. You see, he was confident of ultimate victory and deliverance from his troubles. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14, Paul said, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Yes, God will always lead us in triumph. That's the ultimate victory we can be assured of. And then we come to verses 7 through 9. There David said, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Here is the desire to approach God in prayer and worship. But notice the phrases that David used to express this will. He used a phrase like, I cry, or be gracious to me. Answer me, do not hide your face from me, or do not turn your servant away in anger. These emphasize the intensity of his supplication and the depth of his need. But also we find in these phrases the assurance that God will hear no matter where he is. God, I mean, David could expect that assurance because his heart was right. You see, he's known as the, the friend of God. You see, if we expect God to answer our heart, then our heart, I mean, our desires, our heart must be right also. We cannot expect to live pretty much like we want, to have a heart not right before God, but then when troubles come, turn to God and expect God to bless us. If we expect God to bless us in times of trouble, then our heart must be right. We must be serving him even in good times. And then we find the request of David. Notice in verse 10, there David it said, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. David had seen the result of God removing his blessings from Saul. He knew that what troubles that would be. So he prays that such would never happen. And he said that even when a mother and father forsook him, then God would not do that. And we know that a mother or a father would be the last to forsake someone. But David said God would be there even past them. You know, sometimes humans are either unwilling or unable to help. Even those that might be closest to us. But neither one of those would be true of God. God takes special care of the helpless. And then in verse 11, we find the prayer of David for guidance. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. He wanted to be taught God's way and to be led in the plain path, the plain path of wisdom. The question we need to ask is, do we really seek God's way? Do we really want to follow God? Do we seek to know what God's will for my life is? Only by then can we expect God to bless us. And then we come to verse 12. David said, Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. David had faced many false witnesses during his lifetime. He knew what being falsely accused was all about, just like Jesus. 
in that extent, David was kind of like Christ because the Christ certainly understood as well what false accusations is all about. And we may be falsely accused by various things. But David says, do not be afraid. And Christ tells us the same thing in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. He said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. Here Christ reminds us that all the prophets in the past have been falsely accused. Jesus, of course, was falsely accused. Therefore, don't worry about it, but rejoice, because we can rest assured God will reward us. And then in verses 13 and 14, even in the midst of false witnesses, we find David's assurance and dependence upon God. In verse 13, David said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David had the courage that only faith can give us. David believed that one day he would see the goodness of God. Now, it might have been at a distance, but that faith kept him going. Job expressed a similar sentiment in Job 19, verses 25 and 26. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. After my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. Here was the assurance of ultimate victory. And that assurance and that faith kept him going. And then we come to verse 14. There David said to wait upon the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This is the courage that faith can give us. David believed that one day he would see the goodness of God. And David said to wait upon the Lord. This is a humble resignation to the will of God. Psalm 31 and verse 5, David said, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. And then a similar attitude in Micah 7 and verse 7. Therefore I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Notice we again the confident assurance that God will hear us. But we need to commit our spirit to God and to wait upon God. David and the other says to wait. Slow down. Have patience. You see, God will not deal with us like we think he should deal with us. God may not deliver us at a time when we think God should or would deliver us. So David says to be of good courage. Keep up your spirits in the midst of the, even the greatest dangers and difficulties. Let your hearts be fixed upon God, completely trusting him. If we do that, then we have reason to be of good courage and we can have the confidence to continue to live for God regardless of what the situation might be and might look like. Wait upon God. Yes, God will deliver us. We can be assured of ultimate deliverance. Maybe not in a fleshly standpoint, but we can be assured of ultimate deliverance from God, but we need to wait. We need to have patience and commit ourselves to God, and God will deliver us. This confidence and assurance will give us the strength and the motivation to continue being faithful to God, even in the midst of the greatest difficulties. Do not be afraid. God will take care of us. Thank you. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth. And you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine, 
and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course. Kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsradi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420. 9244214421 God bless you The Church of Christ salutes you